Welcome to part 3 of Chemical Reactions Unit 5. Today we are going to discuss 5.5, 5 types of chemical reactions, and 5.6, types of evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. So let's look at the 5 types of chemical reactions. First, there is synthesis or combination reactions. Then there are decomposition reactions, which are the opposite of synthesis or combination. Then there are single displacement reactions, where one thing is displaced by another. Single displacement reactions are where the metal reactivity series comes into play. And then we have double displacement reactions where you have two ionic compounds. Um, one, the cation displaces the anion of the other one and vice versa. And finally, we have combustion reactions. It's a type of synthesis reaction where oxygen gas is a reactant. Please draw this diagram and have this table in your notes. So let's look at um, descriptions in synthesis combination reactions. Two or more substances combine to form one product. That doesn't mean all you have is one product. Sometimes you have two products. Um, two or three things make one or two more new things. That is called a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction. It's the opposite of a decomposition reaction. Then uh, one substance breaking down into two or more substances is called a decomposition. So note that typically in a synthesis reaction, many things combine to form one thing. In a single displacement reaction, one substance is displaced by one, uh, a more reactive substance forming two new compounds. In a double displacement, two substances are displayed, um, displaced by two reactive substances forming two new compounds. They, both of these are polyatomic cations or they could be monoatomic cations. So in single and double displacement reactions, they are always ionic compounds. Uh, in combustion reactions, you can have two types. It could be an org inorganic substance that does not have carbon and hydrogen together, burning in oxygen gas, and each substance forms an oxide. Um, number two, it can, is an organic compound with carbon and hydrogen, and the oxides of carbon and hydrogen are carbon dioxide and H2O. These are always produced. Let's look at examples. You must be able to identify each type when I show you a chemical reaction. So here's an example of a synthesis reaction. Carbon and hydrogen gas combine to form methane gas. Here is a model of it. And then when you try to balance it, and here is the average equation, the generalized equation A plus B gives you AB. And you have to put a 2 over here because you have 4 hydrogens. So 2 times 2 is 4H2 and now it's balanced. So you have to add 2 more ox hydrogens and you have your mole ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. In decomposition reactions, we can have the reverse of the previous reaction where methane breaks down into carbon and hydrogen. And it's going to be the opposite. And the mole ratio is going to be 1 is to uh, 1 is to 2. The mole ratio, remember, is dependent on the way you have written your reactants and products. If I had this H2, over here and the C over here, it will be a 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. In a single displacement reaction, you need to use the metal reactivity series. So copper and zinc, copper chloride and zinc 
copper zinc is higher up so it can displace copper and form zinc chloride and then copper precipitates falls out of solution as a solid and here is the generalized equation a b plus x gives a b x x b so x and b are going to combine and a is going to be hanging out alone and here is a diagram representation of the atoms and the mole ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 and the double displacement reaction you have a generalized version where you have ax plus by they come together the cation and the anion combine to form a new compound ay and then the opposite cation and the anion combine to form bx as shown over here so here's an example copper chloride and calcium bromide they will form copper bromide and calcium chloride as we have shown over here and note these are ionic compounds so you will write their um, diagram like this the metal ion has made a cation by donating its electron to the anions which have received those electrons and made minus ions so the mole ratio is going to be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 and number 5 let's look at combustion uh, reactions these are inorganic reactions this there's another form of combustion which is organic so anytime you burn anything that's what happens so AB uh, burns in O2 and makes the oxides AO and CO. Um, example, magnesium sulfide combines with oxygen to make magnesium oxide and sulfur dioxide. And here is a diagram view of the reactants and the products. And when we balance this equation, this is an uneven number over here. This one and this one has to add up to equal to an even number. So first we have to make this guy even. So you're going to put a 2 over here. You start with the 2 because it's the smallest non-1 number. And then um, if you, uh, so you have two oxygens here and you have two magnesiums, we have to make it 2 over here. And now we have two sulfurs on this side. So you can put a 2 over here. Now we have 2 sulfurs and 2 magnesiums on both sides. So let's balance the oxygens. Add the oxygens up on the product side. You have 2 plus 4. 2 times 2 is 4. That is 6. So you have a total of 6. So um, this side we have to have a total of 6. Uh, the LCM of 2 and 6 is... 6 so you are going to make 2 times 3 6 so you put a 3 here and here is the filled out diagram of the whole thing and the ratio is 2 is to 3 is to 2 is to 2. Now let's look at an organic combustion reaction with a substance containing carbon and hydrogen and I, this is the generic generalized firm version. Um, so you make this substance has oxygen also. And so you're going to make carbon dioxide and H2 only. And here is a diagram view of it. You don't have to draw diagrams. I'm just showing some people who don't understand if I just show them the chemical reaction. And now um, this, we have an uneven number of oxygen here. So, and um, we have to have an uneven number over here. So you have to have at least some, some number that multiplies by two here and here. So we'll first put a two over here because we want to make this side even. 
And then we have four carbons and two, uh, eight hydrogens and two oxygens. So we have to make this side eight also. So I may put a four over here. And then um, we have four carbons. So we have to put a four here also. So now carbons are balanced on both sides as well as the hydrogens. Now let's add up our oxygens. We have two times four, which is eight. And four times one, that is four. Eight and four is 12. So both of these are equal to 12. So we already have two here. So that's 12 minus two is 10. So this part is supposed to be equal to 10. So to make this 10, you have to multiply this by five. So you will put a five over here. Five oxygen molecules and two molecules of C2H4O. And all of it balances to a mole ratio of 2 is to 5 is to 4 is to 4. Now let's shift gears and look at the different types of evidence that you have to conclude a chemical reaction occurs. Now you sometimes don't see any visible change when a chemical reaction happens. But typically you see one of these five changes. So all chemical reactions occur when electrons are shared in the formation of covalent bonds or electrons are exchanged in the formation of ionic compounds. All chemical reactions are either covalent reactions or ionic reactions. If you want to review this content, go and watch 4.1 and 4.2 videos again. A color change occurs, for example, when the silvery gray color of iron converts into a reddish brown color due to the formation of rust or iron oxide. When you mix baking soda with vinegar, you will notice that the outside of the container turns very, very cold. This is a temperature change, specifically an endothermic reaction the reaction absorbs heat energy from the surroundings that makes it feel cold to the touch. Um, the opposite of that is releasing thermal energy like an exothermic reaction. If you have hand warmers um, in the winter time that uh, when you mix it together it feels hot, that's an exothermic reaction. Um, curdling of milk when you put acid or uh, you see a solid powder being formed um, when you mix two clear things together. That is an example of a precipitate or a solid formation. Uh, in the photosynthesis reaction, oxygen uh, gas is produced along with uh, glucose by combining carbon dioxide gas and water. So this is an example of a production of a new gas. Now don't confuse the formation of a gas with converting something to gas. Uh, for example, water vapor is not a formation of a gas. It is going to the gas state. It is the same substance, H2O, going from solid to liquid to gas. This is a formation of a new gas. Um, sometimes if you make a stinky gas, you might see a sm hear a smell something different. Sometimes you might see a colorful gas, like a brown gas. Um, that is both a production of a gas and a color change. Um, sometimes you see production of light, as in the case of fire and fireworks. Here are some examples of color change iron oxide and this substance making a yellow precipitate. Examples of a temperature change, exothermic and endothermic. Here is a reaction shortly after things are combined, the temperature rises to uh, 30 centigrade from 20. So this is a exothermic reaction because it's releasing temperature, so the, it feels hot. And in, remember in endothermic reactions, it feels cold because 
the reaction is absorbing energy from the surroundings. Whereas exothermic feels hot, shown by this red thermometer, because it's releasing energy. So the formation of the compounds releases more energy. Here, the formation of the compounds require more energy than is found in the chemical bond. So it absorbs energy from the surroundings. Precipitate formation. Here is an example of a precipitate being formed. And here is an example of the different experiment. There is a white powder settling at the bottom. Formation of a gas. You can smell something sometimes or see a color change. We see bubbling in water over here. And here is the formation of a colorful gas. And then a production of light. Here uh, is an example of the potassium metal reacting in water to produce potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, which ignites. We saw this in the lab. Um, and here's the burning of a matchstick and lighting up of fireworks. Let's do a quick review of 5.5 types of chemical reactions and uh, evidence of chemical reactions 5.6. So here are the uh, basic formulas for the five types of chemical reactions. Um, synthesis or combination reactions are the opposite of decomposition reactions. Um, two things form one thing. Here, one thing forms two things. In a single displacement reaction, we take into account the metal reactivity series. A uh, strongly reactive metal can displace a weak metal. So this would be a weak metal. That would be a strong metal. In a double displacement reaction, there are either polyatomic cations or anions or monoatomic cations or anions displacing each other. They swap partners and form new compounds. And in combustion reactions, there are a type of synthesis reaction where you have an organic substance or an inorganic substance combining with oxygen gas. Um, to pr produce oxides. If it's an inorganic substance, you always make just the oxides of the substance. If it's an organic substance, meaning it has carbon and hydrogen, you always make CO2 and H2O. You might make other things too if there are other elements present in the compound formula, but you always make H2O and CO2. Evidence of chemical reactions. Uh, color change, change in temperature. If you release energy, you are going to be exothermic. If you absorb energy, you are going to be endothermic. The former feels hot, the latter feels cold to the touch. Formation of a precipitate or formation of a solid, formation of a new gas, production of light are all re evidence of chemical reactions. That is it from me and this is the end of unit 5. I will see you in unit 6. Please review all this content and watch this video and take notes of everything I showed you and do your exit ticket.